So rhythm and flow in English, it's so important for your speaking fluency as well as your comprehension because it's just going to make it so much easier for other people to understand what you're saying. And we're really gonna have a look at three different things thought groups, stress, and a little bit of connected speech. We're gonna talk about linking. And I just, I don't want to just tell you about this and have you hear it. I also want to show it to you. And the way that I'm going to do this and demonstrate this to you is with a poem. And because it is Christmas time, I've chosen a poem called A Visit from St. Nicholas. It is very popular. So it, it, this is also a little bit of a cultural lesson because this is a poem that you will hear if you're watching a TV show or movie. Now, before we get into rhythm and flow, I, I wanna quickly go over some of the vocabulary so that you definitely understand everything that, that you're going to hear. So it begins, "'Twas the night before Christmas went all through the house." "'Twas' is the very old contraction of it was. It is not something that you should use in spoken English. You may hear it like at the beginning of a story, if it's from a long time ago, but it is the contraction of it was. The next line is, "'Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse.'" Stirring just means moving slightly. And then, "'The stockings were hung by the chimney with care.'" So stockings are talking about like just this large sock that you would uh, at Christmas time hang by the fireplace and it gets filled with presents. And then speaking of the fireplace, a chimney is just like this vertical pipe in, in the home that would let the smoke uh, allow it to escape from the house. Then we have in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. St. Nicholas is just talking about Santa Claus, the big jolly fellow who brings kids all of those gifts. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds. So nestled means that, well, just settled comfortably. And it, often you may hear it as a verb to nestle, but it just refers to one's comfort. And that's a little similar to snug. Snug is an adjective that means comfortable, warm, cozy. And you may hear people use this uh, with that collocation, all snug. I'm all snug under the blanket. In this case, the children are all snug in their bed. And finally, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. So sugar plums, it's just a small round sugary candy. It's, it's not really a plum, it just looks like a plum. Let me say it again, but, but this time together, and then we're gonna talk about thought groups because part of the flow is determined by thought groups. Ready? "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. So as I was saying that, I'm sure that you heard the, the different thought groups because in spoken English, we will use a short pause in order to break down a longer sentence. And really we're just, we're grouping together meaningful information which is why they're called thought groups. It just makes it easier for others to understand what we're saying. And grammatically, it, these pauses are often accompanied with a comma, but, but that's not always the case if you have just a, a question. Would you like coffee or tea? All right, there's no comma in that question, but you heard the two thought groups. Would you like coffee or tea? The other thing I would say is that at the end of a thought group, you're typically going to have a stressed word. And I wanna talk about stress right now because that's going to help us create a rhythm. And that's because, well, English is a stress time language. What does that mean? This means that English is a language where stress syllables or words are said at approximately regular intervals. And that means that the time between one stress syllable and the next are approximately the same. And then if there are any words that come between, they're going to be shortened or reduced to fit this rhythm. So I have now moved to the table, and the reason I have done this is because very soon we're going to create a beat which is really gonna help you understand rhythm. But before we do that, I wanted to quickly let you know that if you would like to develop your speaking fluency, you can join my speaking course Click on that link down below in the description. The course is all about trying to help you speak confidently, speak clearly, and speak naturally. And best of all, because it's 2022, you can use the code SPEAK22 to get 22% off. 
So click on that link down in the description if you'd like to sign up. The course includes weekly group lessons with me. There are lesson PDFs, lesson preview videos, uh, pronunciation video lessons, a couple of audio lessons, resource guides, there is a lot. So click on that link down in the description to find out more about class times and availability. And if you have any questions or would like to take the course privately with me, just send me an email at info at interactiveenglishvideos.com. And I hope to speak to you soon. So let's talk about rhythm. And the reason why I moved to the table is because, well, we need to create a beat. And that's really going to, to show you that you're going to say this poem using those stressed intervals. And I'm going to say each of those intervals for approximately the same amount of time. And the first thing that I need to do is, we'll just, just create a beat, okay? So uh, here's my beat. And it's a little fast, but every time you hear my fingers tap the table, that, that is a stronger sound. That's going to be a stressed word or, or a stressed syllable. Okay, and we're gonna fit everything into this rhythm. Are you ready? Here we go. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Okay, so I told you that was a that was a bit of a fast beat, but you can see the different stressed intervals. Each one of those took about the same amount of time to say. So I, even though I don't have to keep a beat that fast, those intervals are, are still going to be said at approximately the same amount of time. The other thing I'd point out is that you, you can probably tell that the stress is going to come toward the end of the interval. Now, that doesn't mean that you're, you're always going to stress the entire word. Like, you have a word like Christmas, okay? The stress is in that word, but Christmas has two syllables, and the stress is going to be on the first syllable if we really wanted to get specific. So if I wanted to show you exactly where the stress is, then it would look like this. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. No matter whether you're keeping a quick beat or a slow beat, as long as you are saying those intervals in approximately the same amount of time, that's the most important thing because that's going to develop that rhythm and flow. So now let's talk about, well, smoothing things out with connected speech. And really what I'm talking about is linking. So I'm back over here on the couch to talk to you about linking. And this is part of connected speech. And really what it means is that the end of one word is going to blend with the start of the next word. And this often happens when the final sound of one word is a consonant sound. And then this beginning sound of the next word will be a vowel sound. So let's go through the poem and I'm going to point out all of the phrases that we can link. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house when all you have that final consonant sound that n we can link that with the vowel sound in all when all and and really what it would more sound like is that that n is going to get moved over to the beginning of all it was the night before christmas when all through the house all right that's a little exaggerated but just want to make it easier for you to to hear it not a creature was stirring not even a mouse so let's first talk about not a. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I, I'm going to pronounce the article a with the schwa sound, and I'm just gonna say uh, it's an unstressed vowel sound. And then I, I'm gonna change the T a little bit because it comes between two vowel sounds. I'm from the United States, so I'm going to pronounce this with a flap T. It's gonna sound like a soft D. Nada, nada. Okay, and again, we can link that, that D sound at, at the end of not with the article A, nada. All right, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. All right, we can do the same thing with not even a. Again, I'm going to use a flap T, so it's going to sound like a D that's going to get linked, not even, and then we'll link the N with, with the article A, not even a not even a mouse, 
Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. No, nothing we need to link here. All right, yay, excellent. Uh, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Again, there, there's nothing that we need to link, so let's continue. The children were nestled all snug in their beds. Okay, so there, there's a couple of things going on. The first thing that I want to look at, nestled all. So you, you could link that D, that ED has a D sound, with the vowel sound in all, nestled all. It really depends on how quickly you're reading this because remember, that is a different thought group. So because it's a poem, there, there's no rule as to how fast you need to read this. You can find your own rhythm and flow. If you are reading it a little quicker and you're making a much shorter pause, then you may hear people link these words. The children were nestled all snug in their bed Okay, in that case, you do hear a little bit of linking. If you're, you're reading it slower and you really make a pause, then it, you're not going to link those words together. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds. Okay, in that case, I'm not going to link the, the final consonant sound in nestled, that D, with all. I think generally speaking, if words are in two different thought groups, you're not going to end up linking them. But again, it really just depends on, on your own rhythm and flow and how quickly you would be saying this poem. Now the next phrase, snug in, we're definitely going to link that final G sound with the vowel sound in, snug in their beds. And finally, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. So visions of, we're gonna link that, that consonant Z with the vowel sound in of, visions of, and danced in. That ED has a voiceless T sound, which we will link with uh, the vowel sound in in, danced in, danced in their heads. So let's review everything we've been talking about, and I want to read this poem again, and let's read it together, okay? So I want you to say it in the exact same way that I do. Are you ready? "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads." So one thing you may be wondering is, how can, how can you practice this on your own and continue to work on rhythm and flow? Well, the first thing I would say is just find something that you can read and say. I think it really helps if there's something that you're able to read as you're trying to work on the rhythm and flow, which means uh, a song or a poem or, or even a speech. Personally, I think poems are the best way to practice this. The second thing I would say is, I think it really helps if you're able to listen to someone else say it, and then you can try and say it in the exact same way. That's, that's shadowing. I just asked you to say the poem with me. I asked you to shadow me and try to say it in the exact same way. It's not always necessary for you to analyze everything that, that you're trying to practice with and break everything into different thought groups and find the stress and link the different phrases. Shadowing allows you to do this naturally and you're really just letting your ears do all the work and that would be my suggestion. The reason why I tried to break everything down for you in this lesson is just to help you better understand how that rhythm and flow is created and why we talk the way we do. And you could say, why we talk the way we do, okay? I think if you were to do this continuously, it would get a bit annoying after a while. But I just hope that uh, rhythm and flow is a little bit easier for you to understand now. If you enjoyed the lesson, please hit that like button. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. So long.